25 minutes to maintain pressure because that fan does not shut down, period. Once the machine is running, that fan is running. running. So um, they would use different type? No, with this, right? Yeah. No, this is a self-contained and it's indoor. Okay. But what happens, the reason they have a fan cycle control is just a pressure switch for these. And you will find them in most machines, regardless of the manufacturer. Because what happens, it is very important that you maintain a certain head pressure for ice making operation, both in the ice making um, phase and in the harvesting. So when the ice is frozen on the evaporator, the head pressure will... The head pressure will be high enough to give you the hot Right. Yes, that's hot enough to release it. So even during normal operation, the fan here, the condenser fan will cycle on and off to maintain at least for our 404 system. Nah, you really sorry? Nothing. I know. Okay. <laughs> hey, he gets a point for honesty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> This always cycles on and off to maintain. And like I was saying, for our 404 system, most um, ice, ice machine manufacturer likes to see a pressure of 210 PSI. We can work with as low as 180 PSI, but 210 would be a more desirable, okay? And uh, apart from the fan cycle control, they also have a high pressure cutout. Every ice machine has that, guys. High pressure cutout in case you have a high pressure situation. Because, see, this fan cycles on and off. Two things can happen. That control can go bad, or and the fan, stay thing, or, or because you're cycling the fan on and off, it, um, it really works twice as hard as regular fan that, or a fan that goes non-stop. <coughs> okay? Because every time you cycle that, you're pulling LRA, you're exposing this um, fan to excessive heat. Yeah. Okay? And uh, excessive torque. Excessive torque tends to bend the windings inside these motors. And you put stress on everything. And put stress on everything else. Yeah. Um, I've see, actually seen a fan blade <laughs> flew right off of one of these. Because of the stop start, the fan they just decide to pop right off. So it'll be better tomorrow. I've seen them where the, the hub just breaks off the fan. Yeah. The, the hub yes, stays the on hub, the shaft. The hub stays on the shaft and the um, the blades itself. Yeah, that happened to me at the beverage. Tear right off. Yeah. Messed that up, happens. Messed up I've, the coil a little bit. So oh yeah, it it didn't puncture it, but it messed up some of the fins. You can do some serious damage to the fins. All right, and you have to try and straighten the fin because you don't want flattened fins. You restrict the airflow. Yeah. Low pressure control, you do have that too for um, the low loss of charge. You will have low, low pressure control for that. Um, way back, Way back in the 70s, they used to make machines that used the reverse acting low pressure control to initiate harvest and, and, um, for those older machines. But now they have that flapper thing that senses the current and they have, um, they actually have acoustical sensors now that senses, you see them? Sonar, you said. No, yeah, acoustical. Acoustical, it's, take the same way as sonar. But sooner I'll go deeper. This one acoustically listen to the sound of the ice cracking. Yeah, when you freeze ice, they got a different temperature, it cracks differently. Yes, it makes different sounds. That's the principle they use now. Um, that technology is proprietary to Manitoba right now. They're the ones who develop it. 
So nobody else can use it right now. Another seven years. Well, if they did it right, they can renew the patent and go another thing. You see, if you add something onto that to modify it, yeah. they can, you know, renew the, extend, the, 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 extend the patent. So, low pressure control, suction pressure drop too low, <coughs> shuts down your machine. You do not want the machine to work too, too low pressure because it can end up burning the compressor. Reverse acting low pressure switch, that's um, initiate the hybrid cycle. <laughs> See, low pressure control opens on the um, dropping pressure, temperature right? Drop, temperature drop. Reverse acting low pressure closes the contact. It's doing so. Yeah, you, close it. you see the difference here? This one open their contact to shut down the it machine. Down. This close the contact, even though it's in low pressure, it closes the contact to initiate targets. Tell the machine here. I'm at um I'm ready to drop the ice here or harvest the ice because I, I have a full I sense I have a full But you don't see them very often. No, these are the older machines that were made way back in the 70s. Oh. Way back in the 70s. Right. The A series, B series, Manitoba ice machine. So what series is there now? The S. Uh, they use uh, acoustical sensors and they use um, sonar. They went from A to S? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they did not have. Um, they had A, B, A, S. E models. Oh, okay. And then they came out with it, yes. So it's only four models. So four different models. What about the E model? When did that one come out? That probably came out in the um, 80s. And since then, they've kind of developed from that. And every couple of months, they improve on one model and just put a number or something at the end and, you know, so they can keep their patterns. So is the S model the best model out right now? It's the most current. That'd be the best one, would you say? For you to buy um, the S mod because it has all the bells and whistles in it and it tells you when it's ready to clean. It tells you, big, yes, please clean me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can that. It says, you know, it tells you if the filter needs to be cleaned. It tells you if the condenser coil needs to be cleaned. It tells you if the water circuit so needs to be cleaned. So yes, because um, what happens if I know body, the, the technician these days don't really think. So the machine thinks of them, yeah. like a smartphone. And then they ha have the apps. You can use your phone to find out what's going on with the machine. Yeah, but you need the cable to plug it Yes, you do, you, need, you do need to hard wire the machine control to whatever device you have. It's a proprietary cable, I'm sure, it goes towards No, um, I don't think it's that. No, I think it's regular. Why? How much could it be? Yeah. The other one, the one they wanted, was a thousand bucks just for the Honeywell wire. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand bucks just for the And you wire. see, this is what they have in here: microprocessor <coughs> circuit. Yeah. It it performs self-diagnostics. So, so you know, it does tell you. But here's the deal: because that can do this, you have. Way more sensors in there now. Pressure transducers, temperature sensors, airflow sensors. Um, so we have a lot more input compared to the output of a normalized machine. Because the output, regardless of what is the age of the machine, output basically stays the same. It is an ice maker. We make an ice. We make ice, we harvest it. So the cycle stays the same, but all your input now, because it's self-diagnostics, all these input, they have increased inputs now. So you have to know how to measure those um, PTCs, NTC, pressure transducers. You have to know their resistance rating at what temperature. Of course, they will give you. They will give you the values of those at zero degrees most likely, because zero degrees is um, the one constant you can get to. You just put some um, ice in a glass, fill it with water, allow a minute or so, and then stick it in there, and um, you can read off the resistance. And if you get the, the um, right resistance, then you know, 
with no reactor being able to traverse you. Yeah, but how do you get zero degrees out of ice and water? You get ice, six, not zero, I mean 32. 32 degrees. Zero degrees for centigrade. Okay, I'll just say ice and water is not going to make it slow. Good, good, way, to, good way to calibrate your, your thermometer. Right? Yes. So, um, well, zero centigrade is 32 for Oh, yeah, I was just so saying. Technically, we, I was right. I, well, I'm just saying, I heard zero degrees uh -huh. and I was like, yeah, sometimes the thing is, I was used to teaching in the SI system at one time. Mm -hmm. Now this is the imperial system, pounds inches. Imperial? Yeah, pounds yeah, inches. Yeah. yeah, only America uses yeah. it now. I mean, if I go over, if I am, um, if I go out on the system now, you see everything is made in Canada and everything is rated in kilograms and degrees centigrade and what have you. And the Canadians now, when they make their equipment, they don't rate it in horsepower anymore, they rate it in BTUs. So if you don't know, um, 746 BTUs one horsepower, you're kind of right up shit street. Yeah, but don't they have it in both or they only have it written in one? They have it written in one. So you have to know. They don't give a rats behind you with us out there. <laughs> If you can, if you can interpret it, you know what? Don't buy it. Be in you. And um, yeah. See, that's stupid. though, why why we had to stick with the old system when the rest of the world is is different? Why would we have to stick with that when everybody else is different? Okay, that's the politicians. So um, pounds and inches. Yeah. But one of the good things is that these microprocessors give you the history of that ice machine from day one. And it tells you every single fault that was logged into the system. It tells you compressor runtime, the length of the ice making cycle, length of the harvest, temperature of water coming in, temperature of the, the ambient temperature. Does it tell you past maintenance at all? Or? It does give you some history. I mean, there's a limit to the amount of memory it has. Right. But it does give you past history. Um, like, if I had an error code, when we were talking about when the harvest, it had to initiate harvest because we did not have enough water in the sun, it's going to give you that error code. And that error code stays in the machine for 1,000 cycles. Right. And you're going to have to assume somebody came to take care of yes. that error code. But it will show you. At what point? Because it's going to say 500 cycles since last error code was corrected. And then you can but look up the yes. error code, find out what it find is. Find out what it was. And the thing is, the only thing that would erase that is if a new error code come up the same error, but a new code comes up today. It erases that history and lock the new code. As long as it's the same error. What is this? Yes. So you, you have a history um, thing. So, some of these machines I install for the um, McDonald's. They have them in the drive through and in the eating area. I can go into those machines and find out exactly what it, how they um, work since I installed them. Right. If they had any problems. Yeah. And the thing is, see, that's, that's where we have me because they can call and say, hey, we had a major problem that we had to fix out of um, out of warranty, or it was in warranty, and you weren't around. And I can go in there with my laptop and plug in the cable and read off everything and realize, hey, you know what? They're trying to pull something over me. They're trying to get money off. Of me nothing was done because nothing was that. Because the machine is going to log if you shut it down and do something. Because before the machine start working back properly, you have to reset the code, take care of the um, problem. problem, and reset the Clear machine. That. Clear that. All right, but it locks it. So, you know, even the freezers I install for them, mm -hmm. I put in a system that would do that, mm -hmm. and I don't even have to go to their freezer. I can mm -hmm. dial up nice. that shit and get it on the internet from home, mm -hmm. and tell them, hey, you know what? Pay me my freaking money because you didn't do this as you said you did it. But hey, I never had a problem with them. And every single well, system, box. every single system I put down for them, I give them two-year labor warranty. I never had to go back at it. Never. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, it's still out there. You haven't even had a manufacturer problem from like them for within the first two years? No, because then, I, then the equipment's good. Any manufacturer? Here, only the top of the line I buy. Well, I'm just saying, so the equipment's pretty yes. sturdy, reliable. Yes, when I buy a walk-in freezer, top of the line. When an ordinary restaurant would pay ten thousand dollars, my cost to them is about twenty-five. Twenty-five thousand. Of course, I have fifty percent of that is profit anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see, when you do that and you put in that money, that's a, if you have to come back to do something on the warranty. It's covered. It's covered. You already got paid. I already got paid for it. But you don't have to go back on the warranty because you do it right the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I never had to go back on anything on the warranty. Knock on wood. Because I did work for them, Taco Bell, all the Jones Beach, Robert Moses, Capture State Parks, Jones, oh, yeah. Beach, Jones Beach Theater. I did work for all of those places. So make a cylindrical ice like, um, like Chris makes. Mm -hmm. You guys make cylindrical ice, right? Yeah. I think I mentioned. Was it this class or my evening class? I'm not sure who the hell I talked about. But anyhow, if you look at the side view of a cylinder, this cylinder they're talking, this is the outer wall. This is, it's like a thermos flask. Yeah. All right? Refrigerant flows through this section and water flows through that, middle. through the middle. And there is a pump that pumps water. This would be the, like a cutaway view, right? Let's say I cut this cylinder lengthwise. This is what I'm gonna see, all right? Two mm -hmm. half and a, yeah. So the re refrigerant is in here. Right here will be my uh, metering device. And I'll bring in water that away. Actually, I should be, I'm gonna bring it in this way. So I'll be, yeah, I'll be pumping water in here. And as I pump that water, ice begins to form on the inner surface of that cylinder. And as the ice builds up, the, the path for that water becomes small and small and tiny and Come tiny and tiny until, until it gets to a point where it applies a back pressure to this water pump here. And there is a pressure switch in there that as soon as it hit a certain point, it yes. initiates harvest. <laughs> Now, hot gas flows in here, of course, between the, the um, yep. between device and that inject hot gas. The pump still Pushes. runs. It is still running. And it's okay? Still the pump yeah. doesn't stop. <clears throat> and as the hot gas goes through here, it's going to release the ice and just the pressure the pump will just another shoot out the block. Of, uh, another harvest is this. So, that's where um Yeah, we went over this yesterday. Yeah, but not, yeah. Oh well what the heck? No, I'm saying we went over this yesterday yeah. with that. Yeah. So the water pressure pushes the ice from the the harvest is the same, but the water pressure from the pump pushes pushes. Now the how ice. long is those tubes? As long and elaborate as you want it. You know, I work on some of them at all like me. You probably have some that are twice ten, ten feet, ten, feet. Yeah. See, Smaller. the length will be determined by the horsepower of the system. Right. And how much ice you want to make. And how much ice. Well, you know, every machine is rated to give you this amount of ice per 24 hours. Right. All right. So this one may make, uh, let's say, 250 pounds. If I double up on the length of this, it may make 500 pounds. And as you add more length, so you increase the more horsepower. Power. But you yeah, increase the horsepower. Yeah. And but just remember, the water pushes this ice out. Nothing more, nothing less. 
Okay. No, I understand it. Because yeah. it can't and fall out because it's not gravity. Right. And you see, for this one, we don't really have a. Um, like in the other machines with the plate, the evaporator plate where we had the air pushing mm -hmm. the ice off for harvest assist. This one, no, we don't need harvest assist. It's a water pump yeah. pressure. And you know, water pressure can be very destructive all on its own. You know, it don't need help. Yeah. Why did I have to go try draw something when this is a perfect That's mistake. the same thing you said yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So, <coughs> that's how it looks like. That, that looks better than mine. <laughs> <coughs> same thing. I hope they show when the eyes get pushed out. Yep. See? Mm -hmm. And there, there, are, there are some machines that has a um, motor here with a cutter head. It can cut this at predetermined length, or it can crush this and make flake ice or crushed ice, as you want to call it. And you can switch. There are some guys who um, they have two bins side by side with a diverter. You set it to make um, the cylindrical pieces of ice and it fills this bin and when this bin is filled it switches over and it makes um, the crush ice. All automatic. There's a chain, there's a switch you can set for both and it does it when one is the bin is filled with this type of ice, switches over and do the other one. And of course, the, the pressure at which harvest is initiated here is set by the manufacturer. We don't really determine that. Whatever the manufacturer says, it is that. I like this thing there. Yeah. And if you buy ice at some beer distributor, you will actually see this little hole mm -hmm. in the little um, cylinder of ice. And those ice is about um, one inch. That could be adjusted too. Huh? You can adjust that too. If you want the hole bigger or smaller. Yeah, well, um, that can be that will be adjusted by adjusting the pressure on the pump where the pump yeah. initiates the harvest. So if you adjust it to a higher pressure, this hole will be bigger. All right. And if you adjust it really low, this it's hole small. will practically be closed. But. Who's ever think of these damn things, really? So, quality of ice, guys, always. The, if the water quality is no good, the ice quality will be no good. If you have absolutely good quality water, you will get good quality ice. Um, I swear, some people will have a high ball you know, mixed drink, and they tell you, you know what, your ice don't taste good. Those are export drinkers, by the way. <laughs> not, not people like me. So, you know, if on Long Island here, there are certain spots where I may put a filter in, in an ice making system, let's say, if I, 500 pumps per day machine. And I may use, I may have that machine in Iceland. And I may go like, let's say we go in Huntington. Same machine, same size of filter, same type of filter element. In Iceland, I have to change that filter every three months. In Huntington, I have to change it every three weeks. So, depending on the water condition. So, it depends on water quality. <coughs> And that's, that's a true, that's a fact, because well, you know what? You get that with, with regular like hot water yeah. units too. In certain areas they last longer, certain yeah. areas they don't. Because here's the thing. All the ice make ice service in ice lift, three months is when I change the filter. Huntington's, not even three weeks. And I've been there's water over there, right? Yeah, very dirty. 
Yeah. And <coughs> the thing is, in Islip, I get a regular filter. Mm -hmm. In 100 and a half, you get filter for sediment and crap. Damn. They, do you even know that? The, the expensive filter that filters out like almost everything. And when you when you take that out and then you remove it, <laughs> <laughs> line bring my own water bottle. You know, it looks like an octopus or one of those moray yeah. eels. Yeah, right. Just like yeah. right. Sure. See, it has a lot of sediment scale, TDS, and I don't know what it called chlorine. The pH most most water pH is more or less neutral. Uh, I can't see of any place I drink any alkaline or acidic water. So I don't think this is that much of a problem. The only swimming pool you, you have a problem with pH where you gotta correct it. But sediment scale and TDS and iron, man, they're rampant in iron. Um, Living in a dirty island. Huh? Living in a dirty island. No, I think the island has dirt. It's the people. <laughs> yeah. People create that crap. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. You know? But it's dirty. We are all dirty. Filthy animals. The planet Earth is one of the most beautiful places in the whole universe. It's just that the people are screwing it up. Planet Earth? Planet Earth. Planet Earth. Soon, they ain't gonna be none. <laughs> the dinosaurs are coming back. Yeah, I'll leave in the aliens, you know. I'll leave out there. Man, Richard. They work for the US Army. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> you won't believe this, but um, do we know we can freeze ice to different level? Uh, yeah, depending no. on the atmosphere. No, different yeah. levels of temperature. Depending on the atmosphere and pressure. Right? No, what I'm saying, the same ice. Ice is formed at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Yeah. Do you know I can free take that same ice? And instead of harvest, harvesting that ice at 32 degrees, I can harvest it at instead at zero degrees. What would be the difference? If I harvest, if I harvest, I'm going to use more BTUs. Number one, yes. We use more BTUs. You got, you got, you got to take out more BTUs. Lower your temperature on it. Like school back in the day. Okay. Changes. You know, as you change state, that's where the real BTU. It's like superheated steam, but with ice. But okay, here, here's your am. Here's the thing. If you guys, let's say you have a get together this weekend and you go by the beer distributor or beverage distributor, I shouldn't be talking beers in the past, but yeah. Or you go to 7 Eleven and you buy, let's say you buy four bags of ice and you put it in your cooler and you put the drinks in there. You would like that ice to last the whole period of time that you have your guests there. Sure. But if it ice at 32 degrees, it's going to, as soon as it picks as soon up as it hits from the drinks, the drinks it's, melt. it's beginning to melt. <clears throat> but if I freeze the ice down to zero degrees, Man. it's going to last longer and may last up to the next day. Because the all right. But here is the deal though. It does not take much that much energy <coughs> to bring ice from zero degrees, from 32 degrees to zero. Yeah, half a BTU per pound. Yes, 16 yeah. BTUs. Yeah, half a BTU per pound. Yeah. You know? And in the scheme of things, that ain't that much a BTU, because your ice will last longer. <coughs> and if, you, if, you, um, if you're selling ice as your business, and people eventually find out, you know, when we buy ice from this guy, we do not have to go in the middle of the party and pick up more ice. It lasts, and then the next day we still have a hangover drink. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the best thing for a hangover is take a drink of the same thing you had yeah. the day before. There you go. So, it don't work for me. That does not work for me. Means try it. That works as most people. So, you know, you will get a reputation for selling better ice. 
That's the quality. Your, your ice quality is up there. It's harder. Your ice is harder. The way you do that is by, make, by cleaning the ice machines and pure You water. clean the ice machine and then your water, you know, the uh, better the quality of the water, the better the quality of the ice. Thing is, the more impurities ice has, the faster it would melt at a lower temperature than, um, than freezing. It melts below freezing. It's like, it's like salt in the road yeah. during a snowstorm. You know, they saw the road, it's 28 degrees, just finished snowing, but the snow is still melting. It is melting four degrees below freezing point. Freezing That's because of the amount of impurities you put on the ice. The more impurities you have, the, f the lower the temperature at which it will melt, and the faster it will melt. So the purer the ice, the longer it will last? Yeah, the purer the ice, the longer it lasts. You want to see it melt? Put some salt in it. Yeah, it's going to melt, or some sand. Right. And um, I guess. Somebody read this anyhow. Cleaner ice machine plus pure water, hard ice. Yeah. But not too pure. No, not too pure. Yeah. 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 yeah, it is advisable you put filters on it. They don't come with filters. But um, most ice machines, if you do not install a filter when it if it's a new install, new machine, they do not honor your warranty. Uh -huh. But filter is optional due to the filter. Yeah. Yep. And um, by the way, the filters that they recommend, they recommend three 10 inch filters. Each of them. And each manufacturer has their own filter system. Each of those 10 inch filter <coughs> replacement, 125 bucks. And that runs on the waterline. That's got to yeah. suck if you have that in Huntington. 375? It did. I'm saying that's got to suck in Huntington. So, I used to go change three of them every month, and that's 300 and something dollars. And I just, have to drive from Bayshore. Right, just for the filters that you know, to go out there. Actually, it's a place, it's a place called Prime Out in Huntington. Yeah, there. It used to be Coco's on the waterfront or something. Oh, yeah, Coco's over there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. The same people who own the beach tree own that. And they own the building next door. They bought over that building and made it a catering hall. So every the beach, beach street, yeah, there. right on the main street. In street. Yeah. So every three weeks, I used to have to go change. Eventually, you know what? The machine was under warranty, but because I had to change that, I, I remember I told him there is low, low water pressure. I will get ice mm -hmm. built up mm -hmm. in the machine, and it's not going to be making ice. Your bin will be empty, right? Which is what used to happen. I just ripped the whole damn thing out and put one big, one big thing. I said, you know what? I'm going to take care of the warranty. Because sometimes yeah. you're saying it's going through all those filters, drop the water pressure. Yes, and then it dies up. So now with the one big filter, you still have to go back every three weeks? Yeah. Yes, but you see, it's handling, the, they have three machines. Each of those three used to take three filters. Right, Nine. each three filters each. Yes. So now I put one big machine for it, one big filter for everything, and it's cheaper to go back there change it every three weeks because I can't change the quality of the water, no. Right. Right. All right. And that took care of the problem. Yeah. So simple, simple little water problem. You know. Now, what are you using? The charcoal filters? No. Um. We had a uh, Brentwood faucet people ordering some special filter that I can take care of all the problems that they have. <coughs> now, there is a um, cleaning ice machine. Does, does this cleaning they're talking about, it's not going in there with a scrubber and scrub. It's chemical cleaning, which we should do um, cleaning and sanitizing. All right. The same way, the same way you sanitize your kitchen or everything anytime you finish. Uh, for those of you guys who really cook, anyhow. But you know, uh, uh, some of those gas stations they have sanitized the fluid by the pump. You just squirt two feet and you just that sanitize in your hand, right? They recommend I think once a month you at least sanitize these machines, 
uh, cleaning of them, that would depend on the quality of the water you have coming in. The water is the if the water is bad, you have to increase your frequency of cleaning. There's no way I can sit here and tell you that, hey, every six months or every year, you should clean your machine. No, it's, it depends on the environment and the quality of the water coming in. Because if the environment, if it's very dusty, that machine can, you know, the dust, dust gets everywhere through. Right. It goes through every little hole like a little rat. Yeah, so, so, um, we do have scale that we're formed because you always, and no matter where you go in the world, water has some kind of calcium in it. Okay, and it, the deposit forms here in the form, in um, in the form of calcium carbonate. All right. Some yes, some um, and it forms like an insulation. Forms a heavy insulation. Okay, and in some cases it blocks some of those cells from getting enough water. So you're only forming like odd pieces of ice. You're not doing full production. So your production will be reduced. So, oh, did I just speak about dust? Yeah, you see, yeah. airborne, it's more common, so that goes and mixed with your water, you know. And what I normally do when I go into an ice machine the first time is take apart the whole water circuit from water supply to the water distribution, all the tubings, the water pump, everything. And put them in a the sink, wash them out with warm, soapy water, and then do a towel rinse in. Then I clean the machine out. Then put it back scale. now and go through a cleaning process with the re manufacturer's recommended cleaning through it. Then do a sanitizing. The sanitizing has to be certain stuff that's allowed. Yeah, um, it cannot be regular cleaners. Because right there, cleaning solutions are food grade Yeah. So, uh, and they specifically made for ice maker because some ice machine has a nickel coated, um, they have nickel coated on the evaporator. The others are stainless steel, which, you know, that's good enough because the acid don't really up, eat. Yeah, it will stand up to the acid, but you have to be careful with the one that's nickel coated because it's a copper plate that are nickel coated. And that nickel, if you don't treat it right, and piece that peel off, that's, it's, that's it. Because it grabs the ice and it don't want to release it. Ice do not release from bare copper. It releases from nickel. Yeah. Wow. Right. So you do not want to damage that nickel coating that they have. So. Yep, go for it, guys.